Is Pokemon on the Switch really that bad? Well, it's deeper than you might think. The Switch is getting old, and during its time, it's released a bunch of different Pokemon games with varying levels of quality. And the first game released on the Switch was Pokemon Quest, which released on May 29th, 2018. Quest was initially a mobile game that got ported over pretty early on in the Switch's life cycle. This is one of the weirder puzzle games that Pokemon has made. This game suffers a lot because it is a mobile game at heart. It has a blocky art style, which reminds me a lot of the Pokemon Rumble games, but it doesn't have nearly as much charm as those games did. My main issue with this game is that it's just uncomfortable to play. The best way to play this game would be on a phone, because holding the Switch is too cumbersome and heavy to use the touchscreen properly, and when you play docked, it gives you a cursor to use, which feels laggy. I can't say this game is horrible because it's free and you don't really have have to spend money on it, but there's not much of a reason to play it when there's better games on the console. Pokemon Let's Go, Pikachu, and Eevee released on November 16th, 2018, and the Let's Go games were the first somewhat authentic Pokemon games that were released for the Switch. These games were a fusion of Pokemon Yellow and Pokemon Go, and they were made to capitalize off the wild success Pokemon Go had been having in the years prior. They combined the throwing and catching mechanics from Pokemon Go into a main series Pokemon game to make it so people who hadn't played a main series game in a while could pick this up and play it fairly easily. But what makes this game so approachable is what makes this game suffer. It's so easy you could give this game to Helen Keller and I'm sure she would figure it out really quick. I understand making this game simple, but you lose out on a lot of fans who have been playing for years by doing it this way. Catching wasn't the only area made simple. This was the first Pokemon game to get rid of random encounters, which means when you're on a route, you can see what Pokemon are around you and choose who you battle and who you catch and who you don't. I think Pokemon Go is a fine game, but I don't think this game was needed to pull Pokemon Go fans over to the Switch. A lot of people who are playing Pokemon Go aren't gonna go out and buy a Switch just to play more Pokemon games when they can play Pokemon Go for free on their phone. This game would be way better if they had an option to toggle the Pokemon Go option off and make it so if you wanna play this game as an authentic Pokemon experience, experience with battling and catching, you can do that. I didn't think these games were bad, but they were my least favorite Pokemon games for a pretty long time, until something changed that. Pokemon Sword and Shield released on November 15th, 2019, and was the first new generation of Pokemon to release during the Switch's life cycle. This game was set up to fail before release because Pokemon announced prior to this game coming out that this would be the first Pokemon game that would not allow you to use every Pokemon from the previous games. This would be the first time that Pokemon would artificially cap the amount of Pokemon available in a game and it came to be known as Dexit. This outraged a ton of fans and I can understand why. And you combine that with the wild area in this game having graphics that look like they were made for the end 64 and this game was doomed to fail from the start. When moving over to the Switch, people expected Pokemon to look like Breath of the Wild and Mario Odyssey and it just does not hold up like it should. But even with all of these issues, I still feel like these games are overhated. <laughs> Now these games are not incredible by any means, but I do think these games do a lot of things well. I like the new Pokemon in this game, and I think that the Galarian versions of Pokemon are really nice looking. I don't think Dynamaxing is the worst gimmick Pokemon's made, but I don't think it's the best. When it's compared to Mega Evolutions, I can understand the hate, but I don't think that it's that bad. And even though it's controversial, I think that the best thing that Pokemon did during this generation was lean into DLC. This was the first Pokemon game to do that, and I think I prefer this as an option to getting a third title in the series. I understand why you would do this historically. On the DS, in the Game Boy, there was no way to update games. So having a third title was a good way to have quality of life improvements for these games. But now that you can update games through the magic of the internet, there's no reason to have a third title that's going to be the same game with quality of life improvements that I can get for free. I would rather pay $40 for two DLCs to have an additional group of stories while getting free quality of life updates than to pay $60 for a remake of a game with quality of life updates that I could have gotten for free. At the end of the day, I think Sword and Shield were decent games. I don't think they were the best Pokemon games, by any means, but I don't think they deserve a lot of the hate they got. Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Rescue Team DX released on March 6th, 2020. This was a remake of Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Red Rescue Team and Blue Rescue Team for the DS and the Game Boy Advance, and I never thought the Mystery Dungeon games were bad, but at the end of the day, I didn't see them as the best choices to play. What can I say? I'm more of a Pokemon Ranger guy myself. These remakes did a good job at bringing things over from the DS and the Game Boy Advance into one game, and I think it looked really good visually. I don't think the Mystery Dungeon games are bad, I just don't think that they're great and I never reach for these games as something that I really want to play. If you haven't played this game, you're not missing out on much, but if you itch to play a Pokemon game that you haven't before and you've never tried these games, you might want to give it a go. Pokemon Cafe Remix, released on June 24th, 2020. This is another mobile game that was ported over to Switch to be free to play, and it feels like it belongs on a phone better than the Switch. This is a puzzle game that involves you connecting matching Pokemon as a way to remove them from an area, and it feels like it's a Dollar General version of Pokemon Troze. All the mobile games that were brought over to the Switch feel like they were done so as an afterthought. They don't feel like they were built for the Switch, they just were made for the Switch as a secondary option to have another source of income. 
Don't get me wrong, I like the option to play them on the Switch, but considering that it looks and feels like a mobile game, it doesn't feel right to compare it to other games on the Switch as far as quality goes. This and Pokemon Quest just feel like a cash grab, and I don't recommend them. New Pokemon Snap released on April 30th, 2021, and it is exactly what I wanted it to be. The original Pokemon Snap released for the N64, and I played that game way too much as a kid. And to get a new Pokemon Snap with beautiful visuals is something that I've always wanted, and I'm glad we got. This game is not deep by any means, but if you want a casual game, you can sit down and play without thinking too much, this is a perfect choice. Riding on a rail cart and taking pictures of Pokemon with beautiful visuals is something that has so much replayability, and I don't think that people give this game enough hype. It's really cool to see Pokemon in their natural habitat, and to go around taking pictures of them is simple but engaging. My only fault with this game is it's a little expensive, but I was able to find it on sale a couple of times for $30, and for that price, it's 100% worth it. I don't think this game is groundbreaking, but if you want something cozy to play one weekend, this is an awesome choice. Pokemon Unite released on July 20th. 21st, 2021, and this is Pokemon's attempt at making a MOBA game. This game seems like a gateway into League of Legends in the worst way possible, and I cannot allow anyone I care about to fall down that rabbit hole. I don't think this game is bad, I just don't like MOBAs all that much, so this game isn't really my thing. And even though this game isn't for my taste, I don't think it's bad. I've played other MOBA games like Smite and Dota 2, and I think this is a perfect game to get someone into those kind of games. It does a good job of setting itself apart from those games, like instead of having to destroy a tower, you have to collect orbs, and once you have enough orbs, you can destroy a checkpoint, but I'm not somebody who wants to spend money on these kind of games, and considering they bar a lot of the characters by either having to pay for them or wait for them to be free to use, I just didn't find myself having enough energy to play these games. If you're a fan of MOBAs, you might want to check this game out, but if you don't really care for them like I do, then you don't have a problem with missing this game. Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl released on November 19th, 2021. I don't think that Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl are terrible, but they're definitely the worst Pokemon games in my opinion. These games are a faithful remake of Diamond and Pearl, and they did way too good of a job at making them so. They did nothing new to these games, and being a remake for the Gen 4 games, the expectations were really high, and I feel like everybody was let down with this being a copy and paste, instead of being something at least slightly different. This game lacked anything that made it different than Diamond and Pearl, except for the Underground, which is a minuscule change when you compare it to other games in the Pokemon series. Diamond and Pearl were released in 2006, and this game feels like it was released in 2006 as well, because they just took everything from Diamond and Pearl on the DS and brought it over. And that would be fine if they were going to add anything new to this game, but they didn't. They had the opportunity to add things from Platinum, but they completely ignored the fact that that game existed. Every other Pokemon remake has at least noted the fact that they had a successor game, but this is the only one to just be a completely faithful remake that has nothing new. Somehow, this game's art style is the worst Pokemon has ever looked. Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee are remake games, but they at least made the games look better. They kept the chibi art style, and it looks disgusting. Like I said earlier, Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee were my least favorite Pokemon games until this came out, and at least with those games, I found there to be some positives, but this game overall was just a huge letdown. Pokemon Legends Arceus released on January 28th, 2022, and is the most ambitious Pokemon game that Pokemon has made in a long time. Legends Arceus feels like a Pokemon game at its core, but does a lot of things to set it apart from other games in the series. A lot of people will write this game off as a catching simulator, but it does so much more than that. I was skeptical about this game because I didn't think that going back in time was going to be something that the Pokemon series would be able to do well, but it did it perfectly. I think the catching system in this game is extremely fun to have to creep around stealthily and sneak up on Pokemon to catch them is awesome and rewarding. I like how there was an alpha version of Pokemon that were available and they were harder to catch and they were just huge compared to other Pokemon. I like each area being its own separate little wild area that you can explore and when you unlock new methods of transit, you can go back and explore these old areas and feel like they're brand new. My only real complaint is that I don't like a lot of the Hisuian Pokemon, but that's just a personal preference. I think a lot of the Hisuian Pokemon are just lazy designs, but some people think that they're incredible and I'm not going to fault people for that. To me, it feels like Pokemon took a page out of Mario's book and how to change the game's formula to make it feel unique and different, but make it still so it feels like it's a game in the series. If I was going to recommend one Pokemon game to play on the Switch, it would be this one 100% of the time. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet released on November 18th, 2022, and is the most recent Pokemon game we've gotten on Switch. I don't hate Scarlet and Violet like a lot of people do, I think that these games just suffer from not having enough time and having a lack of planning. This is Pokemon's first attempt at an open world game, so I'll give them a little bit of slack as far as graphics goes, 
But when you have games like Breath of the Wild, which came out five years earlier and are similar in scope, it's disappointing to see that Pokemon was not able to keep up. My main issue with this game is that it allows you to explore the open world in any way that you want to, and you can go anywhere you choose, but they didn't make it so you can choose your adventure in any order you want. There's a distinct order on how you need to face these challenges, and if you miss a challenge and go back, it doesn't scale to your level, making it far too easy. Or if you go to a challenge that you're not supposed to be at yet, you're going to get demolished by Pokemon that are 20 levels higher than you, and there's no way to tell. They could have made it so Pokemon scale to your level, so this game had more replayability and you could do the gyms and challenges in any order you want. This game also had DLC. I didn't like it as much as Sword and Shields, but I can't say it was bad. I think the Indigo Disc was a solid expansion, and I like how it focused on double battles, because it felt more like a challenge, having to synergize two Pokemon rather than just one. But Scarlet and Violet are not bad games. I just think that they would have been way better if they were delayed by a year and released in a more finished state. And I think all of the Pokemon games on Switch would have benefited from a similar treatment. Pokemon isn't going anywhere anytime soon, and if they were to just take more time polishing these games off and make them a better experience for both old and new fans, I think Pokemon on the Switch would be just as good as other consoles. But considering there's been so many releases and they've all felt like either half-baked messes or are just ports of mobile games, I can see why Pokemon is getting a bad reputation on the Switch. Hopefully, I think they learned their lesson and they're going to make these games better going forward with games like Legend ZA and whatever the next generation of Pokemon is going to be. I think they're going to spend more time preparing and make these games something truly special.